Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. So, on my stream, we tend to go off on tangents, and we don't always adhere strictly to the schedule that I usually write, as you can see down below. I generally have an idea of what we're going to do, but depending on how the chat goes and the ideas that are thrown around, we sometimes kind of break away and do other things. Uh, one of the things that we did in last stream is they wanted to see one of the lessons that I had with Yilin Yang when I was a 6Q. So I decided to load up the game and show everyone. Uh, now for those of you who don't know, Yilin Yang is a professional 7 Don, I think. I took a series of, what was it, 3 or 4 lessons with him back when I was 6Q to see if I liked lessons, wanted to keep taking lessons or not, uh, that sort of thing. I kept the games nicely saved because you don't often get a chance to play a professional. This is like one of the. Uh, this is like the first time I played a professional, so obviously I saved the game even to this day, and showed it up on stream. Some people, of course, came by later, heard that I did that, wanted to see it uploaded later onto YouTube so they can go and catch it. I uh, figured you guys would too. So here is that game. Do keep in mind I'm a six Q, but you can see what I was like as a six Q and my thought process as a 6Q. So, hope you enjoy that. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Enjoy. Okay, so you said you wanted to see it. This is back when I was a 6Q, I think. What am I here? Yeah, 6Q. Lessons were on IGS. So, at the time, that was my ID. Yes, I was Kenshin, shut up. Versus him, he's YLY. And you're not going to think this is me playing. You're not going to think this is me playing. Um... Oh, I reviewed this game for someone, too. No, I reviewed it for him. This, oh, that was our comments. Oh, God. Sure, why not? Let's, let's just see the comments, too. Because that's a thing. So, K IGS back in the day was very command-based, which is why it says say and then this. That's what IGS just used to be like back in the day. Um, I was worried about being over-aggressive, so I tried to be a little bit more calm second half, okay? This is me trying to be more calm when I was a 6Q. Everyone remember this. This is me being calm, okay? So I play here, I'm black obviously, I approach high, because that's just what I liked at the time. I, I was like all about the influence, remember? Those of you who have seen like my journey through Go will know I was all about the influence. I'm gonna play this Shiseki because that's what we do. Usually Q8 is better. I disagree with that one. I mean, usually Q7 is better. Unless maybe the coordinates are off. Did... Would the coordinates possibly be off here? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't agree with that. Usually we see Q8 here, not Q7, but whatever. So I play here, because why not? It's like the magic sword or whatever. It's an aggressive variation, so we're playing that clearly. He's happy I'm defending myself. I am getting cut. But I do get Sente. So I use Sente to try to attack. He says the corner approach is better than the attack, which I completely agree with. That was my bad. He immediately takes advantage of the fact that I'm going after one stone that's probably not going to die, so he encloses. I'm like, I don't know what to do. Let's play San Rinsei. What are we reviewing? We're reviewing the ancient past, yes. We're reviewing a game that I played as a 6Q way back in the day against uh, Yilun Yang. 
So I fell back to a San Rense because that's that's good, right? We're making a framework. He jumps out because I haven't defended Jack. So now we're going to try to lean and be okay. And he's pointing out that I've got two weak groups. That's bad. Maybe this move's a little too aggressive. He jumps out again. I haven't defended myself. But I'm like, let's try to attack him. I've got this influence. We're going to try to attack the three stone. We're going to attack the pro. It's completely fine. He jumps out. I jump out to defend myself. I am losing control in the center, as he's pointing out. The move isn't good, because I'm weak as crap everywhere. I have to protect everything. Yeah. Not very good for me. He caps me. He's trying to fight me, right? Getting into a fight here, so I'm like, that's okay. I'll poke at him, and then I'm going to poke at him, and then I'm going to cut through him. He asked, what do I want to do here? The answer was just to kill him. Remember, this is my Calmer game. I think my reasoning behind the Calmer game is like, look, I have a, I have a framework. I'm calm now, right? This is, this is, this is a Calm game. Yes, he says, what are you doing? And the answer, of course, was to try to kill him. It's like, all right, we're, we had to give up a stone, but we're getting influence now, so maybe that's good. But it's useless, because it's Gote, so he just takes a point away. So I'm like, all right, let's try to attack this then. God, this is so not calm. Nothing about this game is calm. This is a 6Q trying to kill a professional. That's what this is. <laughs> um, he said this doesn't say about B5 I'm not sure what it's coming about B5 is he ignores because he's completely okay but hey we cut off a group right that's, that's something that I should probably have ignored to continue up that was probably a bad idea at least this way, I get to keep fighting the, the, the group I'm going after. So, yeah, maybe we never got over our anger issues. I don't know. I guess that's kind of calm, making shape, right? Oh, we're poking him again. Oh, good ask move. Okay, that's good. Necessary, and F17 is better. F17, low? Yeah, I played high, though, because I wanted to put pressure on these stones. He defends himself. Isn't needed, I know, but I'm 6Q. I poke at things because I can. And I think he's where... I think the one thing I learned from Yang is that I don't like the high... the one-point high jump uh, from the 4-4, and I usually always play the, the small knights. Like, I almost always play the small knights now because I think maybe it's because I heard it from a pro, like, twice... Here he's just going to attack me. I have a valuable corner, but oh my god, this group is still under attack. I think it dies. I really think it just gets killed. Squeezing strong group? I thought I was just enclosing to like be strong and defend and forcing moves and stuff. And he's just like, no, I'm going to kill you. It's like, oh, okay. I guess that works. Now we have to live here. Doesn't try killing me, though. He's a nice guy. I think he probably could. Or maybe not. This will work. Yeah. So you said the game is close. Like I what? I have no sense of counting, obviously. But I'm, I don't. I was like, no. I mean, these stones die whenever he wants, right? They're just like asking to be killed. Defending myself. He said is the correct answer. Yay. can see that my moves here aren't very useful because this is extremely small. Yep, those stones die. This move's not big, but I thought maybe... I thought maybe I could still cut this group off. Right? 
I thought maybe this group could get cut off still, so I'm going to play here so I can still try to fight him. So in the back of my head, and I remember this distinctly, I was like, okay, wait a minute, I got a group here that I can attack, and I have a group here that I can attack. So if I split this stone off, maybe I can kill him. I, like, still remember this. I still remember. Then he, then he connected, and I was like, no, we have to do something here. Quick, anything. And I didn't know what to do, so all of that was just completely useless. It's like, I want to kill people, but I have, like, a toy sword that can't really hurt anyone. So I have, like, the idea at this point, but it's just nothing's there, you know? I, like, stab people with, like, the little plastic sword, and it just, like, kind of amuses them, and that's about it. And here it's just, like, yeah, lost a lot here. Yeah, that's just going to keep losing everything here. <laughs> but I don't think the ideas were all that bad, you know? Like, like yeah, I cut this off because of that, you know? It's like, sure. D is now behind. I like how he's still counting. Like, that's a pro for you, man. He's still counting. Needed? No, it's not needed. It wasn't needed at all. I just gave away Sente. S12 is big. Yeah, yeah, S12 is big. Yep, played it. L19 first is better. Yeah, you're right. True enough there, too. That went, because see, now that stone's gone. So here, I'm just like, going to keep hemorrhaging all my points in endgame, like I always do. Yeah, this isn't right. That's double Atari. I don't know why. Even back then, I thought this was a thing. I don't know. And here's where the game ended, because there's nothing I can do. Lost little by little, lost game. So that was that was one of my games against Yulin Yang. Maybe we'll look at some of the others some other time. Oh my god, I just thought of the most insulting way to describe someone's go, but it actually made a lot of sense to me before I realized what I was going to say. Oh my god, that that works, but ah, oh. it works, but it just sounds so cruel. Um, like I just thought of someone and trying and like I was trying to think about how to describe their go, right? And the easiest way to describe their go was to say they just haven't developed. They just haven't developed a taste for good moves. And that sounds bad. That sounds really, really bad. But what I mean by that is they'll see something that's maybe uh, orthodox or traditional or just like a nice strong shape to play, but they won't play that in favor of something, you know, more exotic. I'm not saying who I mean by that, Ryota. I, I could mean anyone. I could mean Austin. I could mean Redleaf. Uh, could mean you. You just don't know. How does one develop taste for good moves then? Um, part of it is experience. Part of it is experience. Because a lot of times where you don't want to make that um, slow, strong shape or whatever, and you're panicking over how much territory your opponent has. You just don't see the value of like, why on earth would I spend a move right now to make this stronger? Or why would I spend a move to, you know, defend this or whatever? Because your opponent's going to get a chance to play like a large move elsewhere. But what you don't realize is by not defending that, you're actually giving more points to your opponent in the future. Right? And it's hard to see that because we can see an enclosure on the board 
and we can see that that enclosure is worth like you know 15 20 points so you might abandon a position where you have weaknesses to like make sure they don't get that enclosure to block that 15 20 points you know just like swinging in their favor right however however I need to block this uh, however what you don't what's harder to see from that is by leaving the weaknesses behind then they're gonna get that those points anyway and maybe even more by attacking you later on so it's sometimes hard to find those like good moves because they a lot of times they look slower but if you try playing them over the course of your games you slowly start to realize how much uh, better your position is for playing them and then you kind of get a taste for good moves because of that so just like anything you kind of just like have to try it uh that's sweet there we go uh favorite student favorite student um, I'm not, mm, that's hard to say. I have students that I've liked for different reasons. Like, oh god, I could give you stories, okay, I guess I, I could probably give you stories of my students as long as I don't tell you who they are, right? That's fine. I mean, that, that that's okay, yeah? Now, I'm not gonna say they're, they were one of my favorite students, but they're one of my most memorable, because they were so very different. But I did have this one student who took lessons for on and off for, you know, quite some time. Um, read it so I don't die. Do, 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 That only has two liberties after that. I think I'm going to be fine. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I had the student took lessons on and off for a while, which was kind of cool. Um, not saying if they were male or female. But let's just say this person had a very, very odd habit at the end of every lesson. In that this person, for some reason, said that they could not remember the material unless they got high before we started the review. That's completely true. Every lesson, I would have to, that was that was their ritual. Otherwise, they just could not remember the material. Like, I don't know why that was a thing, but that was a thing. So I'm not saying they were my favorite student, but they're definitely one that I remember. Was it Bradikin? It seems like he'd do that. Oh my god, Bradikin, your secret's out, man. Didn't know Snoop Dogg was your student. No, I don't think, I don't, I don't think it was Snoop. Did not sound like Snoop. You're telling us more stories of your students, Sick Willie mentioned. I do have a few. You guys know the one, though. One of them you already know. Uh, about that one student I had who... Whose biggest issue wasn't understanding the game. It was their own compulsion. Like, they were not able to play a game with the star points left open. Like, they really enjoyed Go. They really wanted to get better at Go. But they had this crazy compulsion where they just had to cover up every star point before they actually started thinking about how to play the game. That one was probably my difficult, my most difficult student. That's really hard to teach that person. But yeah, those lessons were kind of crazy because a lot of those, I was also playing San Rensei. I mean, they were playing a lot of San Rensei. I was playing a lot of San Rensei. And then gradually, we kind of stopped playing that and I kind of began playing other things I'd like leave one star point open and would kind of gradually work on that not really sure how much progress we made but it was kind of fun oh he resigned this right here is normal shape 
you want to definitely know this particular shape. If you play this shape, well, then I can just kind of like go through here and like all of this is just like destroyed now and becomes mine because that cut point. Don't have a good defense. But this, we can see it at this particular board that we now have a defense because all of these stones are nice and happy. Now, granted, I do get some thickness over here. That's true. I, I do have thickness. But we have to keep in mind that your area down here uh, is you are also getting like enough points that you shouldn't really care about the thickness that I have. So, so it should be all good. Um, let's see, I got the Hane in. That's just nice. Same thing here, though. We really do need to defend that cutting point. Like, this area just gets, like, really, really sad because all of these stones are just completely left alone. Whereas this area over here is nice and happy, sure, but it's not really going to give you a lot of territory. We, we need more than that. This little guy is just not enough. And sacrificing the middle stones for, like, that thing is just... So it's not going to make us feel good.